and I can record. All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the August 2nd edition of the Chaos Community Call. So happy to see everybody. It's been a little while. So I've been uh, I've been out. Um, good news is that last week, my dad, who has been in the hospital since Mother's Day, um, very critically ill, but yesterday or last Tuesday, he actually was able to come home. So yay, yay very happy awesome. three months, three months of hospitals. And um, yeah, it's been a little challenging, but, and I moved to a new house. So yeah, it's been a busy summer, but I'm really happy to see everybody. I missed all your lovely faces. So hooray. I missed you. <laughs> I, I, yes, I, I actually should give a huge, huge, huge shout out to Sean and Matt and Venya and Ruth, who all covered all the bases for me while I was away. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. You're amazing. Big hearts, heart, heart, heart to all of you. Um, really appreciate that for real. So um, Matt is going to be out for a couple of weeks now, I believe. So we yep. will see him in a few, but um, yeah, let's go ahead and get to the minutes here. Okay. So we have a bit of a light agenda today because I really wasn't actually sure what to put on here. Um, mm -hmm. So if you think of things that are new that you wanna talk about or something that I've missed, please, please, please add them. Totally open to do that. We'll drop the minutes here in the chat again. Uh, I hate that it hides the chat. Yeah. There we go. When you're sharing your screen. Yeah, the screen sharing. Such a goofy thing. Okay. So um, if you could please add your name and if you did eat breakfast today, what you had. I had one of these kind protein breakfast bars. They just add the protein, I think. So you think you're being healthy, but they're really not. They're really kind of terrible for you, but I love them. So I will eat them anyway. Um, egg sandwich, yummy. Salad, yum, fruit, love it. See, y'all are so healthy. I love that. I had coffee, so. <laughs> coffee for breakfast, yeah. yeah. I offer just that. So, see, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm being healthy because I at least had something else, but it was yeah. probably worse. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let's jump in. Items from last week. So it looked like uh, Ruth and Kevin were going to have a meeting because they wanted to kind of clarify, if I understand properly, clarify what was going to be in the handbook versus what was going to be on the website. Because there is some overlap, especially with things like, you know, who we are, what our goals are, things like that. So um, I know Ruth is out today. She's not feeling well. I don't see Kevin. Is Kevin here? I don't see him. No. So we don't know how that meeting went. I'm fairly certain they met to talk about that, um, but I'm not sure what that uh, resulted in. Was. So we'll yeah. just, yeah. Um, Matt G also had some action items from last time and he's not here to talk about those. So we'll skip all that. We're gonna we're gonna blow through this meeting yeah. like nothing. Y'all are gonna get so much time back. Oh, You're gonna be so happy. Wait, <laughs> next item. <laughs> Um, okay, I see someone added GitHub code spaces. Who wants to talk about that? That was me. So awesome. uh, GitHub has a project called Code Spaces that effectively lets you do editing on a project, a code based project using uh, VS Code, which is the, the Microsoft um, IDE development tool. I wanted to bring it up here. Um, to see how people feel about participating in a program for basically trying this out. I'm thinking it would be interesting from a newcomer perspective to see, for example, if I could get Augur and or Grimoire Lab up in a GitHub code space, which would remove, as a, the vision would be, that we could potentially remove some of the barriers to entry for new developers by trying this out. It is it is still very conceptual. Um, I mean, it does exist and we can create code spaces in our GitHub org, but it, um, of course, VS Code is not an open source tool and code spaces is ultimately something that Microsoft or GitHub would wanna charge for. Um, so it's the, the kind of the community discussion is the trade-offs um, 
a trade-off between you know engaging in something like this and the benefits it could have for getting newcomers in chaos software projects started um, versus it being a you know a company owned tool as it were and i wanted to you know bring this to the community with with my general support for trying it out but also to get either concerns expressed or unexpressed just i don't want to do this kind of like as a solo project i'd like to know if i would like to not do it if there's you know strong feelings of the other way within the community um so that's the idea any th any thoughts wait sorry i missed the obvious one it's free for now so we would be um the uh, the thing for chaos is it would be free for us basically forever if if we tested it and i i see some advantages specifically for the software tools that we have in terms of um trying to figure out how to get people started more quickly in the in the contribution roadmap Do people need to? I think Vinod might be talking, but he's very yeah. soft. Uh, can you hear me? A little bit better now, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying uh, I see no harm if it is free forever for chaos. So we'll uh, even speed up the contribution. So why not? Do we know yeah. that means it'll be free for our users too? Yeah, anybody who is a member of the chaos github organization would be able to use it for free so um that would mean that uh you know so some people it's it's um it's you know we've got like 71 people who have been added to the github organization for chaos and we can add others up until this point we've really only added people when we needed to give them control of a repository or something um, for work group coordination or software or whatever. Um, but, you know, we can add however many people we want to add to the organization, obviously. So it's a, that's, I guess, a formality to it, that it would be a reason to add someone to our GitHub org that previously did not exist. So Sean, once the person is added, what about the trial period? Is it, uh, does it go perpetual or at some point in time, it really has to migrate? Um, right, you know, I have the product manager's uh, word that uh, we would just have perpetual rights to it as an alpha tester or beta tester or whatever. Um, I don't have a written agreement. Um, I just have, you know, have somebody's word. Okay. And, uh, I mean, I, I think, my experience with these things, for example, like with Google or GitHub, when they give you things for free, um, like it took Google a decade to finally ask me for money for my um, six or seven app domains. <laughs> yeah. um, so, I mean, usually, I mean, maybe at some, and then even when they did, when I, no, when I notified them that they were all for nonprofit or academic use, I didn't have to pay anything. So... Okay. I mean, my experience with these kinds of programs has been positive in general. Um, yeah, it, it's a good space to try. My only concern, which is not even a concern per se, is that uh, VS Code is not open source. Yeah. And then the speed that we might obtain can greatly vary if people's uh, base IDE is not visual code, which I might still be wrong because a lot of folks these days choose v, uh, VS, VS code. code yeah I mean person like me I'm an old school I've been using Emacs in so many ways and it's really <laughs> like the most the best and most performant uh, IDE for my use cases I'm mm -hmm. not I'm, I'm against uh, I was sorry I'm not against anybody I can even give it a try just to see but just to keep in mind once uh, we measure anything like their speed up time and things like that it can greatly vary 
if they don't maintain that particular environment. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's, you know, the investment on our part would be, you know, creating environments that, that work and, and from a, from my perspective, I'm a sim similarly, I use text editors and command line for all of my work. Um, I have observed in the last two years that increasingly almost all of my students use VS code. Um, so I, I have seen it propagate a lot. Um, the other thing that be, this uh, VS Code or this code space thing provides is there's actually a, like if you're doing anything that's compute heavy, they actually fire up virtual machines in the background while you're editing with VS Code. So if you're in a very, and if you're in a high, if you have a highly underpowered laptop, uh, and I've had some firsthand reports from some of our colleagues in Chaos Africa who are using um, code spaces for projects that they're working on that, that it does help a lot if you've got a low power laptop and you're running something that's pretty. Yeah, I really, I really, I, I really approve VS Code, trust me, because even when I work with Microsoft, the, the kind of things they have with their telemetry data and which are some of the experimental things we might likely want to carry on some metrics on, they already have it integrated. And there are futures that are going along the line that can help to measure people's level of concentration. If you open it and you are focused on coding or distracted elsewhere, it captures those kind of matrices. So, so VS yeah. Code is something that, I mean, we could really experiment there. And then, I mean, uh, why not give it a try? I'll really be in for this kind of project. It's cool to my understanding. I'm, I'm generally a fan. I think it looks interesting. I, I do like all the things we've talked about already. I like that it, you can standardize your dev environment, the, the accessibility of additional machines if you need them. But I, I also think there's sort of a, if we approach it, assuming that eventually we might have to stop using it, <laughs> um, I think we'd be fine because I think it, it could be a great test and a pilot, but I don't want to somehow become dependent on it. Yeah, I don't I, think we would, but I just like that. That's the risk that I see where if we go all in on it, have no alternatives and suddenly it's like, oh, this is no longer free to use. And if you want to spin up an extra machine, you have to pay for it. Right. I don't want to see that happen or that would basically force us in a position where we'd have to request sponsorship and or to maintain yeah. it. And it's not an open source pays tool. So I just I don't know, I'm thinking about all the pain you express when you ran hackathons and spending mm -hmm. the entire first uh, half of the day setting up the environment and if all of that can be packaged for you, that sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I don't know, like, I, I think it sounds really nice, but I feel like it does sound nicer than it is or like, I don't know, it's just like it sounds awesome. <laughs> so I'm always going to be skeptical yeah. of anything that sounds awesome. No, and I am, I mean, I'm, you know, I would, I brought it to the, to the community meeting because there's of course a little bit of skepticism because it is a tool that ultimately at some point somebody might make us pay for. And I agree with you. I think in the case of Augur and Grimoire Lab, we'd have a hard time tightly coupling the software to it simply because all that software already exists and runs and gets compiled in an alternate way. And so this would merely be reverse engineering the necessary environment to do development in, in a code space. And it's a, basically a metadata file, as I understand it. Um, but if, if there's no, if there's no opposition to me giving it a try uh, with Augur, I'll probably do that this week. Um, I guess there's always the like, I don't know, I'm bringing in my, my profession here, but the alternatives, are there alternatives? Is there something else like this out there that exists that is is more open source based it's a good question um i think i think uh docker certainly provides the ability to do runtime things i haven't i mean i suppose one of the reasons that i'm drawn or curious about this is because i haven't seen anything like it elsewhere um and i i did try it when it became available on my screen and couldn't quite figure it out and then later on, I ran into a GitHub person who is responsible for this. And I asked, I explained the trouble that I had. And he said, well, that's exactly the kind of feedback we need. 
And then that's kind of how we got this connection or invite is me trying and failing and then drawing the right person's attention. I guess I'm not hearing any any words. I'm, I'm hearing I hear all the concerns. I don't hear anybody opposed to me giving it a shot. So I'll give so it a I think you have you have my support on this clearly. I'll give it a try and uh, I'll report back. Let's see if it's it's all that or not. Just a quick aside. Uh, we I think we noticed a huge uh, influx of students from across Africa trying to get started with this kind of project and things like that. I don't know if uh, it's also a venue that it might be some kind of uh, a thing to advertise in for their making just to make it like accessibility to well to i think this yeah i mean from talking with folks in chaos africa the vs code does seem to and uh github spaces github code spaces are things that that they've actually used on projects for chaos so okay um i i know from for, from conversation that that it's kind of already happening okay Cool. Uh, and so, yeah, if like, I don't, I don't have a real, I don't have a, I don't know how long it'll take, um, to, to bend auger to, to what this is. So, um, it's, you know, going forward and experimenting in the open like this is, I think we'll just learn something. Okay. Cause if I, if, I mean, my view is if I can make auger work, I can make grimoire lab work. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I will share what I've learned. The Yoda quote, I think, if that didn't come across. Oh, I did not. I did not get it today. It was a Yoda quote. Wouldn't Yoda say something like, what you have learned, share? <laughs> <laughs> Well, he says it right when he's dying, so that he basically tells oh. him to teach his sister. Like, oh, yeah. Sorry. Wait a minute. There is no. I just I, every time I hear that, I'm hearing it in his voice. Sorry, this is not helpful. No. I feel like Zoom could use like a, you know, they have the background filters. They need like a voice filter that makes your voice sound like other people. So like we need a Yoda filter on our voice to like transform it, and so that would be awesome. There you go, Zoom. Oh, I, I, I did mess it up. It's pass on what you have learned. Sorry. Okay. There you go. <laughs> I, and I just changed my we will try as an experiment to we will do or do not. There is no try <laughs> as an experiment. There you go. See, now you need the Yoda voice. You have yeah. to self fil filter that, I guess, since Zoom is yeah. that advanced. Do you that. Or do not do. There is no try. <laughs> I don't Fantastic. know. It's probably terrible Yoda voice, I'm sure. You're hired. <laughs> um, awesome. All right. Thank you for bringing that up, Sean. That sounds really interesting. And um, we'll see how that goes for sure. And you said you're going to do that both for Augur and Grimoire Lab? Or yeah, do need... if I'm, so I'm going to try it first for Augur, obviously. I know okay. Augur the best. And if I get that to work, presuming I do, then I would try it for Grimoire Lab as well. Perfect. And sounds then, yeah, awesome. It's worth trying, you know, it's, it, as long as no one. Is it opposed to that? Then definitely. It's worth trying. Because you never know how a thing's going to go until it goes. You don't. So. I mean, there's a lot of magic purported here. So I want to see if the magic actually can be made real. <laughs> okay, cool. So if there's no other comments on that, we will move on. Um, the next one is um, a little bit of a shift in the value working group. So I know that you all talked about this uh, last week, I think, in the community call, um, but we also talked about it in value. Sorry, Vinod, we completely redid everything while you were out <laughs> on that day. <laughs> so if, uh, if you haven't watched that recording or looked at those minutes, you might want to do that. Just yeah, so. yeah, we did. While you were out, we we re remade your group. Congrat, <laughs> congrat, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, so I think we had talked before about um, just kind of the interest um, from OSPOs in chaos and chaos metrics. And um, so it seems like it made the most sense to kind of shift the value yeah. group to just focus on that particular uh, um, area or context, I guess is a better word for it. Um, and what that, and it was already doing that, I think already it was kind of shifting that way. Um, but there was this piece um, that we were calling societal value um, that really kind of addressed these issues here. And they, it seems like that would make the most sense to shift those over to the DEI working group. We had all these ideas, but we didn't have, like no one had ever, um, you know, built any of these out um, just from lack of time and um, other things coming up. So um, maybe they'll get a little more attention, a little more love in the DEI working group as well. So does anybody have comments or questions, concerns about any of this? I would just add that like uh, when uh, value working group was being uh, uh, re uh, revised at maths time, these were the things that we were focusing on, but like nobody participated to really work on this. And now it makes a perfect sense to move it to the DI because they are already working on these areas. Yeah, and to be fair, like these are really hard things <laughs> to measure. Yeah. And so, you know, maybe like a little lower hanging fruit <laughs> kind of yeah. kind of snuck in there. So um, these are these are really hard things that uh, I think are important to measure and to, to if we can, but um, we'll definitely take a lot of conversation and a lot of thoughts and brainstorming. So if you see any of these on here that particularly speak to you and you want to bring that up, um, yes, Georg, all the, this is the only part that was moving. Um, Georg asked, did all exist, existing metrics find a new home in this? Yeah. These were the only, the only section, the only focus area that was moving and we didn't have any metrics developed, just some ideas. So if anybody wants to work on any of these, uh, I would say come to the DEI working group or put, start jotting some thoughts down. There's a metrics template you can use um, to do that. And um, yeah, we can, we can maybe at some point build some of these out. So. Yeah. The alignment on this box is annoying me, but I can't fix it. <laughs> I know I couldn't either. I couldn't I was like, scoot over. Like it's, it's two parts to the left. I'm yeah. with you 100%, Sean. Yeah. I uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. It was just the table. Like, come on. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. So if someone can do it, then you get a gold star by your name at the at, at the top of the agenda here. So yeah. <laughs> now that no one else will be paying attention to anything in the meeting yeah. from, now, we'll all be focused on this box. Hey, who did that? Somebody someone just did, did. Somebody just did something good. Was that you, Sophia? No. Oops. I think it was Georg, possibly. All right, well, we're all going to get gold stars because all right. we all were all mentally helping. I completed what somebody else started. <laughs> yes, thank you. Group effort, true collaboration right here in the flesh. Here we go, live, right. live yeah. action collaboration, I love it. Excellent, sorry, it was just, I don't know why that was bothering me. <laughs> it's totally fine, it was really bugging me too. So I'm really happy that I'm not the only one that it was, it was annoying. Um, okay, so let's move on to new items. Uh, we did have a request from Ruth to talk about this, even though she's not here. Um, there's a couple of documents in the community handbook that we just wanted to look at. Um, I, I don't know if these are still accurate. I would love to get everybody's thoughts on this. Um, if you need time, like maybe we can take a minute to just kind of read through this doc here. I'll drop it. Well, it's in the minutes, but I can also drop it here in the chat. Like maybe this is something that we would want to move to a Google Doc and collaborate on, or I'm not sure the best way to do that right now, but um, there's that doc. And then there's another one about roles and responsibilities that we just wanted, you know, just wanted to have everybody look at because it's been a while and I don't know if they still pertain. Do we want to, do we want to take some time and make this like a little bit of a working group? Is that all right? for people to read through this and then give your thoughts. Is that cool? Yeah, I mean, I'm, you... I'm reading through it. All right. Uh, 
I'm going to leave the recording going just because sometimes we have questions that come up and people ask them and when we have the recording paused. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's whenever we pause sure. recording is when we say our most insightful stuff. I know, right? <laughs> it's great. To be perfectly frank, I don't even remember saying this, but apparently I did. So yeah, we, we don't have to leave that in if we don't want, I don't care. I mean, I still think that's true. So go me for saying that. Yeah, but I mean. If we have other things to put in here, that's totally fine. Like whatever, whatever we wanna do. So the. What's actually going through my head is, are there any things that we'd want to include on path to leadership or roles and responsibilities that would be more welcoming? That would, and I don't know that this isn't welcoming. Um, so presumably these would be, these would be pieces of information that would be vital or useful to people after they've started to engage with chaos and and be active and decided that they wanted to take on a more formal or active role in the community it would it's these are kind of ideas as i read them is that on the right track of what we intend here i don't know yeah i guess uh I'm sorry, my connection is a little spotty, so I'm not sure how I'm coming through. Uh, I guess with this document, I do think it needs to be edited. And the, the main problem I see with it is that I don't see it as an actual path to leadership or a guidance for people who want to take on leadership positions in, in our group. It just kind of seems like a, a list, of, list of things. And I'm not sure how this list of things is applied uh, in the governance of our project. So if that makes sense, I'm going to be. Okay. Um, I, Kevin, I can, I can see this is Nicole. I can, I can see where you're coming from on that. Um, be, because as I look through this, it, um, it it feels like hey if you're the if you're if if you're this role you can participate in these ways if you're you know this role you can participate in these ways um, so I, I I I guess this is just me saying yeah I can see how you reach that uh, that that thought. And the, the, the input that I was going to have on this, it doesn't actually do anything for, for, uh, for the uh, path to leadership. Um, it, it plays more in that other camp um, uh, where, hey, maybe consider, you know, uh, doing these kinds of things. Um, uh, and, and the feedback that I was going to have there was, uh, it, you know, from a from a Twitter um, perspective or even a, just social in general, Twitter, LinkedIn, otherwise, um, it it feels like um, that would be a a, a collective um, uh, responsibility per se. M meaning, you know, when I saw Twitter manager and it said like and retweet tweets about Chaos Project. Um, it it feels like we would all be doing that, um, just as a thought. But again, that doesn't really lead. It, it doesn't really play into a path to leadership per se. Yeah, 
Yeah, I also think in some of these roles and responsibilities, like some of them are open to anyone, you know, like anyone can help us with chaos con planning, but like the chaos governing board is an elected position. So it's like confusing because those like these things are right next to each other. So if I'm a newcomer, then, you know, it's not clear to me, like, what can I actually do? Or, you know, like, where can I add my two cents? So maybe we should um, copy these into a Google Doc and give people a chance to kind of get, you know, get your thoughts out and and actually let, let's just redo these. I think they both need redone to be perfectly frank. I don't know what everybody else thinks, but so it seems like there are some ways that we could make these two documents better. I agree. And I know Ruth and Shoya are working on the community handbook, but I feel like that that's a lot to, to, to dump on them and say, okay, fix these things. Like, you know, just figure it out. Like, I don't think that that's super fair. So um, I think maybe the community could, could help <laughs> make these documents better. Agreed. Yeah, so I don't know what the, whatever path they think we should take for that, if it's a Google Doc or whatever. Yeah, gonna... maybe, okay, yes, that's a good point, Sean. Maybe uh, we should check with them and see, because um, we could find this file in the GitHub repository and just copy it straight out, but they may want a different, something different. Yeah. So I will, uh, I'll get with that list. Let's, let's oh, go over here, do an action item here. AI Elizabeth, check with Ruth. Oops. And then what I'll do is maybe post it in the general channel. Is everybody in there? Would Is that maybe the best place to do it? To say, hey, these two docs, here they are. Give us your thoughts. Is that too broad? Is that too weird? I don't know. I think it's, a place to, think? it's a place to start. And maybe Kevin and Ruth or whoever's working on it can invite discussion in a separate meeting when uh, it's time for that. an idea. Did I get disconnected? No, you didn't. Okay. I'm just ignoring you. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. I'm just kidding. We're not ignoring you. Hello? There was just, that was like, a, there was nothing else to add, I guess. Okay. Like, okay. Like, yes, you're right. We should do that. Okay. <laughs> I feel like I'm the discussion killer. I bring something up and <laughs> yep. No, not at all. Uh, we could we could probably see if we can get some insight from DEI and the common working groups as well. Uh, maybe a little feedback on on the document. Yeah, good good idea, Kevin. I feel like these documents are super important to the project, and so in my opinion, I don't think we can have too many people contributing to this. Like I would rather it, you know, be a, a, tr a truly group effort and a, you know, a truly diverse effort um, in what we end up with. So yeah, that's my personal feeling. All right. Thanks everybody for looking at that. What else is on our mind? We have 12 minutes. Anything else to add to talk about? How's it going? How are y'all feeling? Good? I feel good. Oh, I do have something. <laughs> Sorry, I should have put it on the list. I think I've asked this before, so apologies for rehashing. Um, I'm gonna be doing a private session for another company and I'd like to share some about chaos slides. I'm wondering if there are any canned about chaos, the project 
overview slides. I could happy there to make them, but are, I figured I'd ask. There are. Uh, let me see if I can find them quickly. Um, yeah, we are working on some of those documents for the, uh, the the handbook and the website currently too. So if you if you need some more information on that, I'd be happy to uh, to, to get you some, some documents as those come up. One of the things we're we're making is a, a, a timeline of uh, chaos. To kind of tell the story of chaos so yeah that'd be great um so you said i could find these on on the website uh no we're we're building um, them as part of the yeah. website redesign and we're building them as part of the uh, community handbook so these are documents that we are we are creating currently yeah um so, so not quite done yet okay but there is a slide deck that we've shared before i'm just looking for the link well, I, I know to bother you now, Sean, when I actually yeah. start making my slides. No, I'll, I'm, I'm going to be doing this in the next two weeks, so. Yeah, uh, I'm just going to find, I'll find them before I do anything else, because. Thank hey, you. Kevin, since you're um, able to kind of chat, your seems like your internet connection's okay enough. We did skip this one. Um, did you want to talk anything or talk about um, the meeting that you and Ruth had about uh, what goes where, what information goes where with regard to the website versus the handbook. Is there anything to follow up on or report back to us about that? Uh, really, the that conversation was kind of about uh, coordinating coordinating the information uh, that we're creating in the handbook and also the uh, kind of the the information that's going to be displayed on the website. So I, ideally, we'd like to have uh, you know, these, these single points of, of uh, information where we can, uh, uh, in the handbook, that we can actually just pull onto the website from the handbook, right? So the, in those situations where uh, there's information that's in the handbook and on the website, uh, we don't really want to duplicate or uh, uh, keep that information in two different places. So so that, that discussion was really about kind of coordinating uh, the, the documents that we're gonna need for the website and the documents that we kind of need to have in the, the handbook. Uh, so we, we looked at a few other projects. Uh, Kubernetes was one of them we looked at to see how they did their documentation and what kinds of documents were needed. Uh, and we, we, we also discussed what, uh, what documents we would need on the website and how they could exist in the community handbook. So sorry, uh, not too detailed. That's kind of a high level overview of what we discussed. Uh, but uh, we do have a web content meeting coming up on Thursday. And I imagine we will uh, be talking about that in, in more detail. And everyone is certainly welcome to, to come and have those discussions. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Thank you, Kevin. Appreciate that very much. All right, anything else? I did add the link to the slides that several of us have used when having to explain chaos. Aha. Thank <clears> you, Sean. Treat them as a work in progress and uh, adopt what you need for your purposes, Sophia. And if, if there is specific information that you're you're looking for that's not in there, uh, please feel free to reach out to, to me. Uh, I may have I may have some uh, history documentation or uh, or or images that uh, could help you make your slides. Thanks. All right. Well, it doesn't seem like we have anything else. Um, All right. Seven minutes. So you get those back. You're welcome. Yay. Use yes. them wisely. <laughs> hey, team. Thanks, everybody. All right. Talk to you later, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. And we'll Bye. see you. You too. Bye.